Hello people of YouTube and welcome to my very very first actual Dutch lesson on Tom Catches Up. Now like I said in the introduction video of my Dutch learning series, I am by no means a qualified teacher. I am however a native Dutch speaker and I would love to help out some of you that are learning my native language. So to kick off the Dutch learning series we are going to start off with some basic phrases, stuff that you can use and apply in everyday life, especially as you are learning the language and talking to Dutch speakers for the first time, that sort of thing. So uh, let's start off with some greetings. By far the most popular casual greeting is hoi, which is basically our version of hi. Although as English and Dutch are sort of merging together within the Netherlands, especially among the younger generations, hi is perfectly acceptable as well. Then we get to the Dutch version of hello, which is hallo. Hello spelled with an A. Hallo. After your basic hallo, we get to a slightly more formal one, which is goeie, followed by the part of the day that it is. So, goeiemorgen, goeiemiddag, goeienavond, goeienacht. Now I'm saying goeie, the actual way of spelling this is with a D, so goede, which literally means good. So it's just like the English good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Goeie instead of goede is just a slightly more informal way of saying it. And then we have my delicious dialect, which is Gronings from the northeast of the Netherlands. And in Gronings, we have a very nice, simple greeting, moi, which as you can see, is very similar to the standard Dutch one, hoi. So in Dutch, we have hoi, and in Gronings, we have moi. Oh, why am I teaching people Gronings? This is not a good idea. <laughs> okay, so those are some of the basic greetings in Dutch, which naturally get followed by some basic goodbyes. The first one is very simple, doei, D-O, E I, doei. The second one is a slight variation on doei, and it's doeg. It's basically the same word, but with our delicious Dutch G. Very nice and raspy. Doeg. Both doei and doeg basically just mean bye. Then we go to something that roughly translates to see you or see you later, and that is tot ziens. And a more literal translation for tot ziens would be till seeing in brackets each other next time. So, tot scenes. Then the thing my grandma says quite a lot is tot horens, which means the same, but for hearing. So, till we hear each other next time. And my grandma uses this quite a lot when she's saying goodbye on the phone to people. Tot horens. But generally don't use this when you're roughly under 80 years old, because it's kind of old fashioned. And then we again have a goodbye in Gronings, my dialect. Moi. Yep, it is the very, very same word we use for greeting. We are a simple people. Following this, we come to introducing yourself, which you can do in a few different ways. The first is by saying ik ben, which means I am, and then following with your name. So, ik ben Tom. Another variation, which doesn't directly translate well to English, but you see quite a lot in other Germanic languages, is ik hate Tom. So, I am called Tom, I suppose. And ik ben and ik hate are probably the most common ways of introducing yourself to someone. And a slightly more formal and lesser used one is saying my name is. Mijn naam is Tom. But this one I would say is mostly used in like formal addresses and presentations for larger groups, that sort of thing. And like I said, it's, it's kind of more formal than the first two ones. Then we come to nationality and how to say where you are from. I can say, ik kom uit Nederland, which means I come from the Netherlands. Ik kom uit Nederland. Saying that is literally saying where you're from, but stating your identity could be, ik ben Nederlands. I am Dutch. Then another one, which is not for stating your nationality, but for stating where you live, is ik woon in Norwegen, in my case, because I live in Norway. Ik woon in, insert location here. Um, and that means I live in. And then I have a bonus one for you, which some Dutch people are very passionate about, and that is that you can say 
Nederland and Holland zijn niet hetzelfde ding. I'm not going to translate that one, but I'm going to let you figure that one out. If you have figured it out, leave it in the comments below. Holland and Nederland zijn niet hetzelfde ding. Then we get to a thing that is quite important for early language learners. And that is saying that you have no clue what someone who's speaking Dutch to you is actually saying. The first one you could use is ik spreek geen Nederlands. Which is a little bit meta because it means I don't speak Dutch, but you're saying it in Dutch. Ik spreek geen Nederlands. Another one you could use is ik begrijp je niet, which means I don't understand you. Ik begrijp je niet. Then there is another one which in English would sort of have the same meaning, and that is ik versta je niet, which also means I do not understand you. Begrijpen, the first one, ik begrijp je niet, means that you don't understand the meaning of the words someone is saying, but you do physically understand what he is saying. Ik versta je niet, on the other hand, is a phrase you can use when you physically don't understand what someone is saying. Like if someone is mumbling or if he's speaking too fast and you can't make out the words, then you say ik versta je niet. So ik begrijp je niet for meaning, ik versta je niet for physical not understanding. And then we have a slightly more elaborate one. Ik heb geen flauw idee van wat je zo juist gezegd hebt. Now this one is not really basic and like I said it's a bit elaborate and it means I don't have a bloody clue about what you just said. Ik heb geen flauw idee van wat je zo juist gezegd hebt. Kind of a nice one to surprise a Dutchman with when you just started out speaking I suppose. <laughs> then there is a few more like wat zei je which means what did you say? Wat zei je? And this one you can use if you want someone to repeat what they have said before. Wat zei je? A more direct way of asking if someone can repeat something is Kun je dat herhalen? Can you repeat that? Kun je dat herhalen? And that concludes the expressing misunderstanding section of the basic phrases. Which leads me to some ways of apologizing, which is a tip I got from Ophelia. The first one is very simple. Sorry, which is spelled exactly the same as the English sorry, but said with a slightly more raspy R, I suppose. Sorry. You can also say mijn excuses, which literally means my excuses, but sort of more realistically translated, it means I apologize. These first ones, sorry and mijn excuses, you can use in sort of lighter situations, if you want to pass someone who's in the way, that sort of thing. But the last one you should more so reserve for more serious apologetic situations. And that one is het spijt me, which is only a thing you really say when you feel like you've legitimately done something wrong. Het spijt me. And then we are ending on a very light-hearted one, which is how to say that you were just joking about something. I thought about this one for quite a while, and the best way of doing this that I could come up with was just exclaiming grapje. Grapje. The word grap literally means joke. Grapje is small joke. So by exclaiming grapje, you declare that you have made a joke. It's like saying in English, just joking, or I'm just kidding, something among those lines. Grapje. And that concludes the basic phrases lesson of my learning Dutch series. Upcoming episodes in this series include how to ask questions, getting started on Dutch Duolingo, conjugating verbs, how to count, formal versus informal forms, and a thing we call verkleinwoorden, which are add-ons to nouns that make the object the noun is about smaller. So all of that is coming within this series. Thank you very much for watching the first one. Don't forget to randomly push some of the positive buttons down below and I will see you next time. Doei!